Central research. Okay, this one. It's frustrating that if you die even once on those side missions, then it's a fail. Yeah, like, I don't mind it being a fail. I do mind it, uh... I do mind losing the mission permanently, though. Okay, so we need to go down. We need to head under Central Research. Boom. Boom. Ooh, what's that? Oh. Okay. Okay. Cafeteria dimensional research. Okay, so how do I go down? Oh wait, here we go. Can I get through here now? Aha. Hmm. Not this way. Not this way. Whoa. Who chucked a grenade? Never mind. Okay. Okay. Whoop. Whoop. Oh god, oh god. Okay, hang on, hang on. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, okay, that didn't work out the way I'd hoped. Crap. Okay. So we've got to find a way to go down. I didn't see another way to go. Did Did anyone else notice something? What am I hearing? I've got one headphone off of my ear right now. Just because the sounds I'm hearing outside my room are freaking me out. Crap. Okay. Alright. 
back to trying to go down. Okay, so there is a way down here. Just need to be careful about where I'm jumping. So I can't quite see where I'm maybe there okay there okay okay that worked out then where okay okay we're making it down yeet Holy crap, okay. This is a long way down. Oh my god. What the hell is this? Astral, astral blip. Okay. What? Ay, ay, ay. Okay. What in the hell is this? What fresh hell have I walked into now? Couldn't be bothered to wait for the mitten for the next lift. There wasn't one. There wasn't one now for. What? Oh. Uh. Okay. Hello? H hello? I don't like the sounds. I don't like the sounds I'm hearing. Oh, right, before I forget. Uh, options. Uh, controls audio display. Someone asked me to turn the brightness up just a scotch. Okay. Just a little, little, a little scooch. Oh. Are those our guys, or are those his guys? Also, what the hell's back here? What? Oh. Hi. Um. Seize accelerator. Okay. There's always another one. You just got you just got to wait long enough. That's not how this works now for. I wish that is not how this works. Okay, they're they're friendly? Apparently. What in the world? What the hell is all this? What is going on?
This is so weird. This is so goddamn weird. Uh huh. You realize I'm the person in charge around here, right, you two? No? Okay then. Just give me a second. I'm still. I'm. I'm borrowing your research information. What? Okay. Oh, what's that? Okay. Let's see what these are. Unread. Ooh, and we got a thing apparently. Meh. Okay, we got a few things. You're not in charge. You just get to act like you're in charge. Excuse you. I'm pretty sure I'm in charge. Underhill checking in. Hmm. Hello, Rhea. How is it going down? How is it going down there? Enjoying the mold so far? Settling back into life at the old FBC? I also wanted to ask how your coffee with Emily went. She's a star on the rise, incredibly bright, extremely intuitive. But I want to hear what you thought of her. I think you two could be very good on a project together, could learn a lot from each other. Let's get together and chat about it soon. Anyway, sorry for the interruption. I'm sure you can't think of anything besides the mold right now. You always were a woman of focus. I always admired that about you. Talk soon, Casper. All right. Mold threshold. Oh, God. <clears throat> So you want to know how my mold research is getting on, Casper? Here it is. Microscopic organisms, similar in appearance to blank, constrict the architecture of the mold. I do not understand if these blank are the original disseminators of the mold or are bitten by some fungal infection. The mold is the most prolific and durable organism I have ever seen. I theorize there is a mold source located somewhere on our side of the threshold, rooted here to accelerate growth in our dimension. I refer to this yet unknown source as mold-1. The mold produces an enticing aroma to encourage human consumption of itself. It propagates in the chest cavity and quickly subsumes the entire body, seizing control of motor functions. This behavior was not observed when I first arrived, which means the mold has adapted to our presence. Targeting our biological imperatives as a way to spread it is a truly ingenious little thing. A full report will be very soon. Keep your slacks on. Well, all right. Threshold utility counter essay? What? Oh, God. Dr. Darling's recently penned essay titled Blank contains some glaring omissions that I feel I must shine a light on. Firstly, the entire premise of the essay is that the quarry threshold is beneficial to the Bureau, while the mold is actively hostile, to use his words. We cannot determine the worth of these, of these dimensions and their life forms using bureaucratic definitions. Secondly, the mold is much more beneficial than some rock. If the blank creating the mold were reconfigured in their, in their purpose, the structures they could build would rival the greatest, sky the greatest skyscrapers. The mold's resistance to various strains of disease we've attempted to introduce could be derived into blank. Yes, admittedly, this application is more difficult than picking up a rock and gluing it to a wall, but I pause to wonder when the Bureau lost its eagerness for a challenge. Refer to file 2351863 for full report. Well, all right then. 
And then while she talks, I'm going to pour myself a drink. Do you normally barge into people's private workspaces? She clearly doesn't know who she's talking to. Shouldn't you be in a safe room? Why? Because of the things the rangers keep going on about. Haven't you people sorted that out yet? The situation down here could spell doom for the Bureau. You mean this morgue? Correct. Perhaps you could help me. I require samples of various mold strains, and the mold has made the environment far too dangerous for me to fetch them myself. Really? Mold samples? I thought this could spell doom. It could, and it will, whoever you are. The mold is spreading. We need to find the source before it spreads too far. Any samples will do that? No. Samples of five unique strains, when blended properly, will allow you to travel deeper into the pit where I've pinpointed the approximate location of the source of the mold. Huh. Okay. So, what do these samples look like? <coughs> Similar to the one on my table there. I've made a list of the samples I need. Here. You'll find them throughout the threshold. I'll take a look. My name's Jesse, by the way. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Collect the mold samples for Dr. Underhill. Type A grows near fresh corpses. Type B grows near toilets. Type C grows near televisions. Type D grows near staircases. Type E grows near the pit. Okay. All right, then. Have you worked at the FBC very long? Not long enough to understand their inane methodology. They want me to solve the mold, but how is one to solve anything when the basic molecular structure of this fungus is an utter enigma? Oh, sorry, are you asking me? It's rhetorical. The Bureau wants to control, not comprehend. But to answer your question, I'm a seasoned threshold researcher that's been brought in on a provisional basis to resolve this matter. That's all you had to say. <laughs> okay. So she's very up her own, um... What have you learned about the mold? Firstly, the term mold is a gross oversimplification used only to ease communication. That said, the mold itself appears to be the product of complex microorganisms. They okay. The mold, building structures like minuscule cities, swiftly colonizing our dimension, and the speed of these tiny engineers relative to their size is simply staggering. So it grows fast. If you're not going to listen, then why did you ask? Duh. Wow. Calm down, lady. So the mold is coming in from where? We don't have a name for the threshold dimension. The origin point has been identified, but the density of the fungus makes it impossible to enter. Even if we could, I speculate that we would only find a reality entirely subsumed by the fungus. Total decomposition. It's weird how excited she is, right? Huh. <coughs> what do you know about the hiss? How would I know anything about an entity I've only just learned of? This is exactly the Bureau's problem. My work is always interrupted by these, these superfluous matters. Calm down. Just keep your HRA on and I'm sure you'll be fine. This crude thing. I thought it was Darling's idea of a practical joke. Not quite. Just keep your head down while I handle the hiss. I need to get going. Try not to transport any spores outside the infected areas. Hmm. I hate no guard duty down that. here. It was fucking weird. This is nothing. The clocks? Now that's weird. What's weird about a bunch of clocks? Shut up. <laughs> okay, so how the hell do I get these samples? Can they just be anywhere? Oh, 
Like, would there be any back here? Like, say, I don't know, that one spot I found? Oh. No? Hmm. Okay. Alright, let's try going out the other door. renewal exclusive to grip pierce and spin okay uh oh evade energy cost down launch energy cost down sure We found a thing. Plastic tree procedures. I don't want to speak your name with a soundproof cell. A Holiday Memories brand white plastic tree with green plastic stand. The item repeats words and phrases spoken within a range of blank feet, always in a tone below blank hertz. This verbal mimicry has profoundly distressing effects on the individual it's copying. The item was taken from the blank, a Canadian research station established on Ross Island, Antarctica, where it used to celebrate the... Wait, I've read this one before. At least I'm pretty sure I have. Huh. Maybe it was this one? Fun fan something. Maybe it was the pink flamingo. Agents noticed a transient commonly found outside the entrance of the Bureau headquarters would carry the item and loudly claim to be responsible for the lack of inclement weather. The frequency of these claims attracted the personal interest of Dr. Darling. In interviews disguised as casual conversations, the transient reported that the item gives me clouds when it's hot and sun when it's not. An event of note occurred during a heavy downpour when the vagrant was witnessed performing a possible ritual with the item. See file PAI-1372 for a detailed observation. Dr. Darling wait reported a wait of blank seconds before the rain stopped. The vagrant was seized the next day. After blank, he was found to possess no blank and was released. The item remains in bureau custody under suspicion of altered status. Though this still has not been proven, all known variations of identification formulas have failed to elicit a response from the item. Well, all right, then. Weather controlling pink flamingo. Good to know. Uh, wait, how do I get out of here? Oh, okay. Oh boy. 
Oh, I don't like that. Is all this? Damn it. Okay, okay. It's fine. It's fine. Whoa. Whoa, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. What just hit me? Shoot. Okay. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Ooh. I didn't know it hit me. <sighs> oh my, oh my, oh my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Ah. Hi again, Karash. Oof, oh boy, it's warm. It's a tad warm. Hmm. I'm all the way back here. Oh my god. Jesse learns that the active threshold below Central Research and the researcher named Dr. Underhill working there. Underhill sends Jesse to look for samples of mold strains that will allow her to travel deeper into the active threshold. Well, son of a bitch. Damn it. Okay. Okay. I'm tired. Oh, all right, Karash. 
Are you going to try and get some rest, or... Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 